let us say you are in a car and your position is given by the equation x is equal to 16 t square so if you plot a time versus position graph you get a plot like this so you can see at time t equal to 2 seconds you are at x is equal to 64 meters then you continue moving ahead and at time t equal to 4 seconds you reach x is equal to 256 meters now you are asked the average velocity between t equal to 2 seconds and 4 seconds well as we learned earlier to find v average all you need to do is find the slope of the line connecting these two points and we can see the slope here is ds upon dt or 192 meters upon 2 seconds that equals 96 meters per second now if you're asked what is the average velocity between t is equal to 2 seconds and t equal to 3.5 seconds that is we have a reduced time interval you can again connect the two points by a straight line and find its slope which would give you the average velocity between these two points so we find v average is delta s upon delta t that equals 132 meters upon 1.5 seconds which equals 88 meters per second now you are asked what is the average velocity between t equal to 2 seconds and t equal to 3 seconds again we adopt the same approach and draw a straight line between these two points and calculate the slope which would give you the average velocity between these two times and you can keep doing this with reduced time intervals or delta t so the average velocity between t equal to 2 seconds and 2.5 seconds would be the slope of this line that is delta s upon delta t again now what you can observe is that as we are approaching t equal to 2 seconds because first we took 4 seconds then 3.5 seconds then 3 seconds then 2.5 the slope of this line is changing and getting more and more aligned with the curve of the graph around t equal to 2 seconds and I would like you all to visualize what I'm going to say now so as you keep reducing delta t to smaller levels say you try to find average velocity between 2 seconds and 2.1 seconds you'll find that the line connecting the two points that is t equal to 2 seconds and 2.1 seconds is almost on the curve and you can keep reducing delta t for example you can find the average velocity between 2 seconds and 2.01 seconds and then you can find the average velocity between 2 seconds and 2.001 seconds and then 2 seconds and 2.0001 seconds and so on now what you can see is that delta t can keep reducing so in mathematical terms we say that the limit of delta t is approaching zero and as delta t approaches zero you'll observe that this straight line actually becomes a tangent to the curve at t equal to 2 seconds then the slope of this tangent at t equal to 2 seconds is called the instantaneous velocity at 2 seconds and in a more general way we write instantaneous velocity at any time t is equal to delta s upon delta t as the limit of delta t approaches 0 note that i am not saying that delta t is equal to 0 because if i say that then delta s upon delta t will become undefined so a clever way out is that we say that delta t is approaching zero or is almost zero and then a short way of writing this expression is dx upon dt that is the first derivative of x with respect to t so the quantity that tells us how fast an object is moving anywhere along its path is the instantaneous velocity often just called velocity and since this is a slope at any instant of time it would mean higher the absolute value of slope more the instantaneous velocity so you can see here the slope is higher compared to this therefore the instantaneous velocity must be more and therefore we can use a longer length of velocity vector to represent velocity at this point compared to this point 
So the moment you see a steep curve, you should be able to tell that the instantaneous velocity must be higher there. So for this particular equation, x is equal to 16 t square, we can find the first derivative as dx upon dt is equal to 32 t, which is your expression for finding instantaneous velocity at any time t for your car. So let me write it as v is equal to dx upon dt is equal to 32 t and v here means instantaneous velocity and also when i want to write v average i will write like this now if you ask what is the instantaneous velocity of the car at t equal to 10 seconds we calculate it as v instantaneous is equal to 32 into 10 or 320 meters per second or let us put 10 as a subscript to indicate that this is the instantaneous velocity at t equal to 10 seconds. Now let us see what the slope of the tangent at any point that gives you the instantaneous velocity at that point tells us about the direction of the velocity at that point. So to understand that consider this x versus t graph and seeing this graph you can say that at t equal to zero, the slope of this tangent here at this point is positive because the line is tilting to the right in upward direction, which basically means that the velocity is also positive or the car is moving in positive x direction. Then at time t equal to two seconds, we draw a tangent to point B and we see the slope of the tangent is again positive, which indicates that the velocity at t equal to 2 seconds is also positive and the car is moving in positive x direction. You must have also observed that the slope here is steeper and therefore instantaneous velocity must be higher compared to velocity at t equal to 0 seconds and that is the reason we are showing it with a vector that has a longer length. Then at time t equal to 4 seconds tangent to the curve has a 0 slope which means the instantaneous velocity is also zero and the car is not moving. At t equal to six seconds, we see that the tangent to the curve at d tilts towards the left and therefore we know it has negative slope, which means the velocity is negative and this means the car is moving in the minus x direction. Again, at t equal to eight seconds, the tangent to point E has a negative slope, which means the instantaneous velocity is negative or the car is moving in the negative x direction. Also, you can see the value of slope here is small, which means the instantaneous velocity also must be small. And therefore, we have shown it with a vector of smaller length. Another thing I would like to point out is that at point C or t equal to four seconds, where the velocity is zero, you would observe that after this time, the slope turns negative, which means that till point C, the object was moving in the positive x direction, but at t equal to four seconds, it stopped momentarily. And after that, that is after t equal to four seconds, it started moving in the negative x direction. So you see the sign of the slope indicates the direction of motion of the particle. A negative slope on x versus t graph means the particle is moving in minus x direction and a positive slope indicates the particle is moving in positive x direction. Let us also see how a velocity versus time graph can be made using the position versus time graph. So let us say you have a x versus t graph like this then using information in this graph, we will draw a velocity versus time graph down here. So you can see that between time t equal to zero and t equal to one second, the position of the particle is not changing, which means the velocity is zero. This can also be derived from the fact that between t equal to zero second and one second, the graph is a flat line, which means the tangent at any point will also be a flat line with zero slope which in turn means the velocity at every point will also be zero. Now between t equal to one second and three second, we see the position of the particle is changing. And if we draw tangents to the curve 
at various points between t equal to 1 second and t equal to 3 seconds, you will see that the slope of the tangent will keep increasing, which means the velocity is also increasing in this section. You can also see that the slope here is always positive, hence the particle is moving in the positive x direction. Then between t equal to 3 seconds and 8 seconds, we see that while the position of the particle is changing, but tangent to any point in this section of the graph will have the same slope at every point simply because this section itself is a straight line and tangent to a straight line would be the line itself. Hence, velocity remains constant in this time interval and that is exactly how we show it down here. We can calculate this velocity by taking x2 minus x1 by t2 minus t1 in this section that gives us v equal to 4 meters per second. So you can say that the instantaneous velocity at any point in this section is the same as the average velocity between these two points. Then between time interval 8 to 9 seconds we find the slope of the tangent is reducing which means the instantaneous velocity at each point is also reducing and therefore we get a graph like this where velocity is reducing. Here too the slope of the tangent is always positive indicating the instantaneous velocity is also positive at all times and therefore the particle is moving in plus x direction. Then after t equal to 9 seconds the position of the particle is not changing which means the velocity is zero and that is what we show here. Okay, with all that we have learned so far, let us try to solve a problem. So what we have here is a particle which moves along the x-axis and its displacement is given by the equation x is equal to 9.75 plus 1.5 t cube, where t is in seconds and x is in centimeters. So the first question is what is the average velocity in the time interval t equal to 2 seconds and 3 seconds. So to find the average velocity between t equal to 2 seconds and 3 seconds we need to know the displacement between the two points or x3 minus x2. So let us go ahead and find x2 and x3 and using this equation we can find x2 is equal to 9.75 plus 1.5 into 2 cube which equals 21.75 centimeters and x3 is equal to 9.75 plus 1.5 into 3 cube that equals 50.25 centimeters. So the average velocity between t equal to 2 and 3 seconds will be v average is equal to x3 minus x2 upon t3 minus t2 that equals 50.25 minus 21.75 divided by 3 minus 2 that equals 28.5 centimeters per second. Next question is what is the instantaneous velocity at t equal to seconds. So we know the instantaneous velocity at any point can be found by taking the first derivative of x with respect to t. So v is equal to dx upon dt that equals 4.5 t square. So the instantaneous velocity or let us just call it velocity at t equal to 2 seconds is equal to 4.5 into 2 square that equals 18 centimeters per second. The next question is what is the instantaneous velocity at t equal to 3 seconds. So that simple again using the same formula velocity at t equal to 3 seconds equals 4.5 into 3 square that equals 40.5 centimeters per second. Okay the next question is interesting and what they're asking is what is the instantaneous velocity when the particle is midway between position at t equal to 2 seconds and t equal to 3 seconds. Well, x at t equal to 2 seconds is 21.75 centimeters and x at t equal to 3 seconds is equal to 50.25 centimeters which we've already calculated. Then the midway value of x should be x2 plus x3 upon 
2 which equals 21.75 plus 50.25 divided by 2 that equals 36 centimeters. So the time at which the particle is at this position that is 36 centimeters can be found by putting 36 in this equation. So what we get is 36 is equal to 9.75 plus 1.5 t cube and we find t is equal to 2.596 seconds. Now we can find the instantaneous velocity at midway point that is at t equal to 2.596 seconds as v is equal to 0.5 into 2.596 to the power 2 that equals 30.3 centimeters per second. So let us quickly summarize the lesson and also look at some tips that may be useful when you solve problems. So number one is instantaneous velocity can be found using the formula instantaneous velocity is equal to limit of delta t tending to 0 delta x upon delta t which is equal to dx upon dt or the first derivative of x with respect to t. Number two is on a position time graph instantaneous velocity at a point is equal to the slope of the tangent at that point. Number three is higher the magnitude of slope more the magnitude of instantaneous velocity. In other words steeper the curve at a point higher the instantaneous velocity. Number four is the sign of the slope indicates the direction of motion of the particle. A negative slope on a position time graph means the particle is moving in minus x direction and a positive slope indicates the particle is moving in the positive x direction. Number five is for a particle moving with constant velocity, the average velocity will be the same as the instantaneous velocity instantaneous speed is found by taking the absolute value of instantaneous velocity and it is always positive. So if you want to understand kinematics better you should go through this playlist which explores the topic in unique ways that will help you solve problems a lot faster. Also if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video.